Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah anna Muhammadar Rasulullah Madar Rasulullah Hayya ala salah Hayya ala salah حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجال كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله عز وجل وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة Indeed, all praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we seek His help, and we seek His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evils within ourselves and from the evil consequences of our bad deeds. Whomever Allah guides, no one can deprive them of guidance, and whomever Allah leaves to go astray, no one can guide them. I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah alone, having no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's slave and final messenger. O you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared and don't die except as Muslims. O people, revere your Lord who created you from a single soul and from its mate. And from the two of them, a multitude of men and women have taqwa of Allah by whom you demand your mutual rights and don't cut ties with the wombs that bore you. Indeed, Allah is ever a watcher over you. O you who believe, have taqwa of Allah and say a word that is correct. Allah will guide you to do good deeds and forgive you of your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has achieved the greatest of achievements. Indeed, the most truthful speech is the book of Allah. 
And the best of what people take as guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the most evil of affairs are things that people add to the religion. Every addition to the religion is an innovation. Every innovation is a misguidance. And every misguidance leads to the hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu ista'inu bis sabri wa salah. Inna allaha ma'as sabirin. O you who believe, seek help. Seek aid with sabr, patience, and salah, and prayer. Inna allaha ma'as sabirin. Verily Allah is with the sabirin. Also there occurs in the hadith collected by Imam Muslim on the authority of Abu Malik Al-Harith ibn Asim Al-Ash'ari radiyallahu an He said Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam At-tuhuru shatru al-iman Purity, purification is half of faith Walhamdulillah tamla'u al-mizan And saying alhamdulillah all praise belongs to Allah it fills the scales, the scales on the day of judgment. Wa subhanallah walhamdulillah, and saying both subhanallah, exalted as Allah, walhamdulillah, all praise be, belongs to Allah. Tamla'u aw tamla'ani ma bayna samai wal ard. They fill all that is between the heavens and the earth. Wa salatu nur, and salah is nur, light. Wa sadaqatu burhan. And given charity is a proof. وَالصَّبْرُ ضِيَاء And patience is ضِيَاء And we're going to come back to that. وَالْقُرْآنُ حُجَّةٌ لَكَ أَوْ عَلَيْكَ And the Qur'an is either a proof for you or against you. كُلُّ النَّاسُ يَغْدُوا All of the people start their day off. Huh? They start their day off working towards freeing themselves. Or, يعني, uh, or يعني, uh, all of the people start their day off in the early part of the morning, working towards either in, uh, يعني, imprisoning themselves or freeing themselves. In the verse that we begin the khutbah with, Allah mentions salah and sabr together. And in this hadith, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, mentioned salah and sabr together. Allah said in the verse, seek Allah's aid, seek help with sabr and salah. In the hadith, the Prophet وسلم, said, was salatu nur, salah is nur, light. Was sadaqatu burhan, given charity is a proof. Was sabru duya, and sabr patience is duya. What do the salah and sabr have in common here? Noor and Diyā are both lights. Noor is light. Huh? And this is the type of, for example, the light that comes from the moon, we call it Noor. But the light that comes from the sun, we call it Diyā. And that is because the light that comes from the sun, it is, uh, it is accompanied by heat, intensifying heat. And such is the case with Sabr. There are times where to be patient regarding a matter is so is so hard to be patient at times. And the times that we live in, in is no exception to that rule. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, as it occurs in a hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with, pleased with him. He said that the Messenger, he said firstly, he quoted the hadith and then afterwards he said, I heard this from your Prophet. He said, لا يأتي زمان. There will not come a time إلا إلا uh, except that the one after it, meaning the time after it, will be worse than the time before it. And he mentioned this hadith when the people were complaining to him about Al Hajjaj, who was a ruler during that time. And he was oppressing many of the people. So they were complaining about the oppression, the oppression from him, and he reminded them of this hadith. From the things we can take from this hadith is that. Towards the end of times, yani, the affairs will be far worse than the times before. And there's no doubt that we're living in those times. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said in one hadith what means a time will come 
wherein holding on to Islam will be like holding on to hot coals. Hot coals. It will be so hard. Who can hold on to the coal? Who can touch it, let alone hold on to it? It will be so hard to hold on to it. However, brothers and sisters in Islam, this deen of ours has encouraged us to have sabr in all of our affairs. To have sabr in all of our affairs. Allah says in the same surah, Surah Al-Baqarah, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْسٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ and we will surely test you with something of fear and hunger and a loss of wealth and lives and fruits. But give glad tidings to the Sabirin. Those who when they are afflicted with a calamity, قالوا, they say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Verily to Allah we belong and to him we shall sh certainly return. Those are the ones upon whom are blessings from their Lord وَرَحْمَةً and mercy وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُحْتَدُونَ And they are the ones who are rightly guided. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said as occurs in the hadith collected by Imam al-Nasai and Shaykh al-Albani deemed the hadith to be sahih Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu he reported the Prophet sallallahu said ma u'tiya ahadun ata' khayrun wa awsa' min as-sabr no one has been given a gift that is better and that is more vast and long lasting than as-sabr than patience walidha and for this reason dhakara Allah as-sabr wa as-sabirina fi kitabihi Allah has mentioned patience and he has mentioned the patient fi kitabihi in his book. Amiran bihi, ordering it. Muraghiban fi, encouraging it. Wa mubayyinan azamul ajr al mutarattab ala hadha al khuluq al azim. And likewise, Allah has explained in detail the great reward that is associated with having this virtuous, this exalted character. And that is a sabr. Wa ja'alahu min asbab al awni. And Allah has made having patience from the causes of receiving al-awn, his aid, wal ma'iyya, and his company. فَقَالَ subhana كَمَا ذَكَرْنَا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَةِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ Oh, you who believe, seek aid with sabr and salah. Verily, Allah is with the sabirin. And here... We have to point out something at the end of this verse, what Allah mentioned. He said, Inna Allah ma'a. Verily, Allah is with a sabirin This issue of al ma'iya, Allah being with certain people, then the ma'iya of Allah is of two types, brothers and sisters in Islam. And remember this today and never forget this. Everyone remember this and put this, keep this with you. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is above the heavens, above his throne in a manner that is befitting him, subhana. While at the same time, alongside with that, he has informed us in num numerous places in his book that he is with his creation, right, in general. And in some places he mentioned that he is with a specific group of his creation, as he did in this verse. So what does it mean when we hear these ayat, when Allah says he is with us? Then, Allah being with the creation in general refers to his knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows every single thing that is taking place. There is no place that is absent from his knowledge. And likewise, he hears every single thing. And he sees every single thing. This is the general ma'iyya. This applies to all of the creation, Muslim, kafir, young, old. In this sense, he is with everyone. However, in this verse, Allah has mentioned a, a ma'iyya that is khasa, that is specific. He said, Inna Allah ma'as sabirin. Verily, Allah is with the patient. This is a specific ma'iyya. And what is this ma'iyya? This ma'iyya is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aiding them, supporting them, 
loving them, giving them tawfiq, giving them protection, as occurs in the hadith al-Qudsi that we mentioned a couple of weeks ago wherein the Prophet ﷺ reported that Allah said, whoever declares war against a wali of mine, I shall declare war against him. This is an example of that specific ma'iyah. And this is the belief of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah from the great Imams of the past, including Abu Hanifa, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, uh, Imam Malik, and Imam Shafi'i, and Imam Ahmed, wa ghayruhum, and other than them. This is what they believe concerning this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned this in his book in numerous places, this issue of a sabr. Sabr, brothers and sisters in Islam, the Prophet sallallahu described it as being nisful iman, half of faith. Half of faith. Sabr. The purpose of fasting the month of Ramadan is to nourish and cultivate within us sabr. So much so that the month of Ramadan, one of its names is Shahru al-Sabr, the month of patience. The month of patience. And al-Sabr, brothers and sisters in Islam, unlike the other deeds, as Sulaiman ibn Qasim, one of the great imams of the second generation, he said that all of the deeds, the reward for it has been established and it is known. Except sabr. Sabr is the only action. The reward, we don't know, we don't know what the reward is. Allah has kept this hidden with Himself. And Allah has told us in Surah Az Zumar, chapter 39, verse 10. Uh, yani, indeed, the Patient will be given their reward without account, without measure. Sulaiman ibn Qasim, he said, this is similar to when you pour water, right? Yani it will be the reward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give to them. Why? Because in this dunya, they were patient with everything that was thrown their way. Look at the stories of the prophets, brothers and sisters in Islam. Do you know of any patience that is greater than the patience of the prophets? The Prophet ﷺ said, "Either ahab Allahu qawman ibtalahum." If Allah loves a people, He subjects them to trials and tribulations. Think about that. If He loves you, He's going to subject you to trials and tribulations. Why? It's not because Allah wants to harm you and inconvenience you, but it's because of one. That is a part of the development. That is a part of the cultivation. How can you become the best version of yourself without any trials and tribulations? Look at the sabr of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Twenty-three years. Look at his sabr in Mecca. Look at what he endured. Even when he sent people to Habasha, he stayed behind. Even when they were given permission to make a hijrah to Medina, he stayed behind. Everyone went first. He stayed behind. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Our Prophet Sallallahu was the best example of sabr, just as he was the best example of every single thing that Allah ordered in the Qur'an. You won't find anything that Allah ordered us with in the Qur'an, except that the first imam to implement that was Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even when the battle became tense, look at the battle of Hunayn, when the Muslims, many of whom were new Muslims, and they were happy and excited about their big numbers. Some of them said, we will not be defeated today due to numbers. They were impressed. And so while they were impressed and, and, and happy and feeling secure about their situation, huh, the enemy caught them off guard, started hurling rocks and stones at them from the cliffs and in the cuts to such a degree that the Muslims scattered. And many of them dispersed and left the Prophet ﷺ except the, the senior companions. And they reported about the Prophet ﷺ that while the people were scattering and it seemed like the tides were changing and not, and not in favor of the Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ threw himself right in the heart of the battle. And he said, I am the son of Abdul Muttalib. I am the Prophet. And there is no lie in that. He is patient despite everything that is be, he is going through. So what are we complaining about today? Have any of us suffered? Are any of us being subjected to the likes of what the Prophet and the Sahaba were being subjected to? Have you not considered the situation of Bilal ibn Rabah? 
how they dealt with him for just saying La ilaha illallah. Subhanallah. They took him, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, tied the ropes to his arms with horses on both sides pulling in opposite directions. In the hot part of the day, and if you think that is the most, no, they took the, the big hot boulder and put it on his flesh so hot that it melted his skin until it started becoming liquid. And he was not even the worst of the companions subjected to uh, punish, torture. There were others. Look at Sumayya radiallahu ta'ala anha. Look at what those people endured and what they went through. And that didn't turn them away from their religion. But rather they were firm. They were patient. And they continued. And look at how Allah dealt with them. If you read the biographies of the Sahaba and you look at after the Prophet's death, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you look at those same people, who did they become? They became the Imams, the leaders of this dunya. Look at Bilal. He became a leader. And so many others. Where they were one day hungry and famished, they became, alhamdulillah, later in their lives, well and good. And this is the situation. In the ma'al usri yusra, really with hardship, come ease. But we, the Muslims, have to be patient. And we're going to continue, inshallah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah. والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبع هداه وشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه. The reason that they were able to be patient and endure all of this, brothers and sisters in Islam, is because of the iman, the faith that was in their heart. That tree of iman that they had with them. Their faith and their certainty that Allah's promise is true, that Allah doesn't break his promise. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take a person who in this life went through so many hardships and tests and trials. And he will allow this person to enter into the Jannah just for a moment. And then he will ask this person. Have you ever experienced any hardship or difficulty? And as a result of this person being in Jannah just for one moment, he will say, La ya Rabb, never. Never have I experienced any hardship or difficulty. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed us that there will be another person who in this life, he was living the good life, the easy life, the affluent life. He will be made to enter into Jahannam just for one moment. And then he will be asked, have you ever had any good in the dunya? He will say, la ya rab, never. I never had any good. Just one moment in Jahannam will make a person forget about whatever ease and comfort he had in this life. And likewise, just one moment in the Jannah will cause a person to forget about the hardship they experienced in this life. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that on a day of judgment, a person, it will be said to a person who was in, who was in Jahannam in hell. What would you give to ransom yourself today? What would you give to free yourself from being in this place today? And the person will say, I will give the entire dunya and all that is in it to free myself. And Allah will say, I asked you for less than that. I asked you for less than that. Where are we, Ya Ikhwan? Where are we in this regard? Where are we in this regard? When we look at ourselves and when we look at the early Muslims, this is one of the benefits in studying the seerah, which alhamdulillah they have going on right now in the masjid. The Muslims should be studying the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ. This is how you truly show your love for the Prophet ﷺ, learning his seerah. Not doing a lot of that other stuff that you find people doing, saying that they love the Prophet. You, lo you show your love by learning his seerah. And when you learn about his seerah and the seerah of the people who were around him, you come to realize the difference between us and them. Between us and them. During those early times, there used to be, it was reported that you would find in the classes of the imams, the scholars, 50,000 students in one class. 
something that when we hear it just kind of sounds like unbelievable. 50,000 in the class, in these class. When we have our classes these days, how many people come to these classes? Six, 10, 15 maybe. But if we say the masjid is going to have a dinner on Saturday, if we say we're going to have chicken biryani, if we say we're going to have a cookout, how many Muslims show up? Not only with their wives, even with their children. That means what? We are more concerned about food and filling our stomachs than we are with knowledge and filling our hearts. May Allah forgive us. May Allah rectify our affairs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book, Inna Allah la yughayiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayiru ma bi anfusihim. Allah does not change the condition of a people until they change the condition of themselves. And then he said, وَإِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِقَوْمٍ سُوءٍ فَلَا مَرَدَّ لَهُ And if Allah intends for a people hardship or evil, فَلَا مَرَدَّ لَهُ There is no one that can repel that from them. If we want to see our situation today change, O Muslims, we have to change our condition. We have to return back to that religion that was sent down from above the seven heavens to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith of Thawban, he said, إِذَا أَخَذْتُمْ When you take hold of the tails of the camels or the cows and you become pleased with agriculture, meaning business, dunya, وَرَضِيتُمْ بِالدُّنْيَا And you become pleased with the dunya, Allah will cause a humiliation to descend upon you. And he will not raise it from you. Until what? Hatta tarji'u ila dinikum. Until you turn back to your religion. This is the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in another hadith of Thawban. He said, radiallahu anhu, the Prophet said, The nations of the world are soon going to call each other upon you. In the same manner, a person invites people to eat from a plate of food. Subhanallah. In the same manner, a person invites people to eat from a plate of food. One of the shayukh has written a book on this hadith explaining it. And he said, in this hadith is an indication that Allah has put in the lands of the Muslims that which is of great benefit and desired by the nations of disbelief. Oil, gold, silver, uh, natural gas, all types of stuff Allah has put in the lands of the Muslims. The Prophet said, the nations of the world are soon going to call one another upon you in the same manner he, a person invites people to eat from the plate of food. And so the companions who were present, they said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, Will that be because we will be few in numbers? Will it be because we will be few in numbers? Yawma idhan on that day? The Prophet Sallallahu said, Bel antum kathir. Rather, you will be many. Last time we checked, there is over a billion Muslims in the world. Over a billion. There is now about six, between six, seven billion people in the world. There are over a billion Muslims. The Prophet ﷺ said, Antum kathir, you will be many that day. Walakinnakum ke ghutha, or ghutha ke ghutha is sale. You will be, however, you will be like the, the ghutha, that foam that is on the ocean. Nobody wants to touch it. No one gives it or assigns to it any value. And then he said, Allah will remove from the hearts of your enemies fear of you. And he will put in your hearts wahan. And they said, what is wahan, ya Rasulullah? He says, hubbu dunya wa karahiyatul maut. Love of this dunya huh? and fear of death. And that is exactly what is our issue today. We love the dunya. And we love it way too much. Even though we're not going to even be here forever. One of the Salaf said, work for this dunya in a manner that reflects the time in which you're going to be here. But work for the hereafter in a manner 
that reflects the time in which you're going to be there. We will only be in this dunya for a little bit of time. Have you not read the Quran? More than one place in the Quran where Allah talks about the people who when they are resurrected from their graves, they will ask, Kem labithtum? Huh? How, how long did you remain in this world? Huh? They will say for a day or a part of a day. This is a very, very short time here. So what are we doing here? This world is the place to plant the seeds and the akhirah is the place to reap the fruits. How can we claim we believe in that and our days don't reflect that? This is why the Sahaba were busy. When you study that seerah of the Prophet 23 years, there wasn't, as we say in our time, there wasn't a dull moment. There was not a moment of stagnation. They were not stagnant. They were constantly busy and intentional. And one of the things that they were busy with is da'wah, calling the people to Islam. Muslims today, unfortunately, we are falling short in this area. Instead of giving da'wah, you know, we are doing other things. We are working in a business for 10, 15 years and our co-worker doesn't know anything about Islam. We're living in a neighborhood five years. Your neighbor don't know anything about Islam. What kind of neighbor are you? The Prophet ﷺ said, by Allah, he doesn't believe. By Allah, he doesn't believe. The one who goes to bed with his stomach full and his neighbor is hungry. If that's what he said about food, then what about the knowledge of La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah? How can you say Sally is a good lady and Mike is a good guy and you've never told Sally and Mike about Islam? They don't know anything about you, your family. They don't know what is it that you're doing when you're leaving the house five times a day and returning. No wonder when something like September 11th comes along, it's so easy for people to believe these lies that people are painting about Islam and the Muslims. Because when the people of truth be quiet, the people of falsehood will speak. And they are the ones whose narrative will be accepted as haq. Aqulu ma tasma'oon wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad aqim as-salah.